Hello and welcome to our online service for August. This week we are basing our prayers, thoughts and reflections on some words of poetry written around 3,000 years ago, most probably by a very celebrated but flawed man named David, who became ancient Israel's second king. I am of course talking about Psalm 23, so moving a piece that even in our own age people are still putting its beautiful words to fresh music. And it is one of these contemporary versions which we hope you will enjoy today as a framework for our worship. Let's begin by hearing the psalm itself from the NIV translation of it. Read by David Suchet, best known for playing Hercule Poirot. Psalm 23 The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. As you can see, I have moved over to my thinking chair. Psalm 23 is, of course, attributed to David, who became second king of ancient Israel. As a lad, he was a shepherd watching over his family's flock, so, no surprise he should use this experience to talk of his God. It contains many references to shepherding, finding green pasture to feed the sheep, and streams of fresh water to quench their thirst, having to travel lonely paths to gather them in, and the practical support of his staff, and a rod to beat off any wild animals, or even other unfriendly people. Then the joy of returning home to a good meal and to bathe and attend any wounds and scratches with oil. And perhaps even the hint of the shepherd's dog when he talks about goodness and mercy as following him wherever he goes. It's worth our noting that from this psalm we learn that the ordinary things around us can and do speak of the Almighty if only our spiritual eyes and ears are attentive. Anyway, more to follow. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul. And I will trust in you. And I will trust in you. For your endless mercy follows me. Your goodness will. my ways in righteousness, and He anoints my head with all, and my cup is overflows with joy, I feast on His pure 
Psalm 23 concerns restoration and renewal. Our God, the Good Shepherd, wants to help his people get that rest and renewal, not just physically, but also within our very souls. Spiritual renewal and restoration, as it were. And we can use our nation's pride in some of its historical buildings as an illustration of the attitude which would be helpful in faith terms. Much energy and resources goes into preserving our our historic buildings. And it's obvious why. They're often very beautiful and inspiring. Look at this website for the ongoing works around Westminster. They even use words often associated with, with faith, restoration and renewal. Take a look. We of course have some amazing buildings in our own area here in East North Ants. St Peter's Church at Lowick for example. Um, Sadly it was stripped of its lead roof by thieves and now there are many people desperate for it not to deteriorate because of that. The dilemma as ever being finance, as the congregation there is small, so it needs many others to help. Anyway, these buildings, amazing as they are, are an illustration of something even more important, the ongoing renewal and perhaps restoration of our faith in Jesus Christ. Note some of the psalmist's words when he wrote, God leads me beside the still waters. There's a saying, of course, isn't there, that still waters run very deep. So too, the help of God by the Holy Spirit runs very deep and is inexhaustible. We should use it.
The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul. And I will trust in you. And I will trust in you. For your endless mercy follows me. Your goodness will guides me along the right paths. The second section of the psalm regards the guidance God wants to give us and in the books of the Bible, many other writings down the centuries, godly people in our own age, others of faith in our churches and of course the assistance of the Spirit, God has given us plenty of guidance more than enough in the examples I have given, and yet there is so much more. The teaching, dying and rising of Jesus himself. So no lack of godly guidance then. Like sheep though, we sometimes need gently pushing along the right paths. So allow all of the examples I have given to be at your disposal. Reach out for them consistently and in doing so, add prayer. Pray a little, pray a lot, or just pray a reasonable amount, but pray. As the psalmist wrote, you prepare a table before me and anoint my head with oil. As a picture that reminds us that God always welcomes us when we turn our minds and hearts in God's direction. It's as though we are being fed to restore and renew us. He guides my ways in righteousness And he anoints King James Version of the Bible, perhaps one of Psalm 23's best known phrases is, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. In the translation we've used today, it's very similar. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. No doubt there were many shadowy, lonely tracks through the mountainous wilderness of Judea which inspired this line of thought. And the illustration is obvious enough. Soaking up the things of God will help during dark times. It's no surprise how much these words are used at funeral services when the reminder that we are all only here temporarily is brought to the forefront of our minds. One of the writers in the New Testament wrote, God is love, and love casts out fear. 
very true because fear and love are opposites. We know this because a fear shared with someone we love is a fear halved. And God as ever wants to share our fears, even when we wonder if they are unreasonable. Doesn't matter if they trouble us, then God wants to know, just as the psalmist suggests. And the psalmist, despite his frailties, tried to live his life by this. And in a moment we'll remember in our prayers some of the things that people struggle with. And though I walk the darkest path, I will not fear the evil one, for you are So let's pause and pray together in the Spirit. Lord, hear our thanks today for all you have provided for us. Like a good shepherd, you desire our well-being. Thank you for placing us among family or friends for company. You provide food for our sustenance and are always more ready to listen than we are to pray. Today we also remember all in dark places. We pray for the people of Ukraine in their hardship. We pray for Israel and Palestine, yet again in conflict. We remember two places suffering from drought and areas where food is scarce. And today we pray especially for the family and friends of little Archie Battersby, whose life support was removed as this video was being made. For all known to us who are in pain or sickness or depression, we pray that they may know you with them. We repeat that prayer, Lord. We pray that they may know you with them. So, Lord, hear our prayer today as we pray in the name of our Lord, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so to finish our time, let's pray together with confidence the prayer that Jesus taught us, that prayer which many millions around the world will be echoing with us today, the Lord's Prayer. 
our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those that sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And may that great shepherd of the sheep, who gave his life that we might have life, be with each one of us today. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit remain with us and those we love today and forevermore. Amen. And go well.